In this video, I will be making Pepper Parson from Pinky Cooper and the Jet Set Pets. My fascination with these characters started with the Pinky and Pepper Forever comic. I definitely recommend reading it, but be warned it contains themes of sex, toxicity, and suicide. I love the doll line the comic is based on, but unfortunately they are a little out of my price range. As such, I have resorted to making my own in BJD form. I'm starting with Pepper. I will primarily be basing my doll on her appearance in the comic, but will take elements from the official dolls as well. As always, anticipate moderate to heavy creative liberties. This isn't intended to be a bootleg version of the official Pepper Parson. This is my Pepper Parson, custom tailored to my wants. Let's start with the sculpting. There are sockets in the sides of the head for placement of posable ears. I will not be using these for this project. I first fill them with aluminum foil, leaving a bit of space to smooth over with milliput. I combined the two parts of milliput. I fill each socket with a small dollop of the putty before moving on to the face for some modifications. It's fairly easy to achieve a shape I like for the nose, but the lip is hell on earth difficulty to get right. I end up taking my gloves off. Milliput can be irritating to the skin, so absolutely do this at your own discretion and don't assume it's safe just because I did it. Definitely be cautious if you have sensitive skin. When I finally get a lower lip I don't hate, I turn my attention back to the sockets. I use a bit of water to smooth over them. I then fill in some of the holes left over in the head from after I removed the support material. Let's move on to painting. With black, blue, navy, and violet, I mix up a very dark blue color to use as a base. I brush it over the body and face. I then paint white details onto the hands, feet, face, and torso. I love the look of hand-painted fur details. The individual brush strokes feel so warm and organic to me. The way they overlap to create varying tones between the two colors. Now to seal this thing with Mod Podge. I find working with a slightly damp brush and periodically washing it helps a lot, applying the sealant as light as possible. When I do mess up, it's easy to undo it with a little bit of water. Though be gentle because water can also scrub away the acrylic paint underneath. I still can't believe that Weird Al Yankovic canonically reproduced with Pinkie Pie. I loved Weird Al Yankovic when I was like, a kid. He was like, one of my icons. Now to glue suede the joints. I really dislike the paper method. I find it clumsy and inefficient. Typically, I wait a moment for the glue to cool down and then spread it with my finger but I normally end up burning myself at least once or twice anyway. I don't know why it took me this long to realize I can just spread the glue out with one of my silicone tip sculpting tools. The tolerances on the knee and elbow joints for the Cabot BJD are so tight they wouldn't fit together after suading. I had to heat these parts up with a hair dryer to remove the hot glue. If you're feeling scared to push on, Always remember that mistakes can generally be fixed or incorporated. The knees for the Cabot BJD are designed with a sort of ratcheting mechanism that makes them more stable, so glue suading here really isn't necessary anyway. Oh my lord. Glue suading helps a bunch but the glue stringing mess is a disaster. Moving on to the face up. I start with some soft pastel. 
It's a bit of trial and error to get it to apply how I want. I use my wet paper towel to wipe and smudge it. Be careful with this because Mod Podge is not waterproof. I like the way the blush looks on the white fur, but it really doesn't appear on the black at all, so I decide to take the white fur detail out farther. After filling in her cheeks with white and sealing it with another coat of Mod Podge, I'm ready to try this again. This time I go in with watercolor pencil and I'm actually quite surprised by how well it sticks to the Mod Podge. Even Mr. Super Clear doesn't always perform this well for me. I add blush above the nose and to the cheeks. After doing the cheeks, I decide I don't want any of her makeup to go all the way to red, so I erase her nose blushing and redo it in pink. I realize the way I sculpted her lip, her mouth is slightly open, so I make sure to get some darker purple red tones down in there. It looks really messy right now, but I will clean it up with some white paint. In the process we trust. Looking like a bloated baby with a nosebleed who ate too many raspberries is just a part of it. I suggested um, having a little bit of water on your brush while doing Mod Podge. Yeah, well. Try not to do that if you're sealing colored pencil or else you might end up with this situation. It's smeared around. When sealing watercolor pencil with Mod Podge, I recommend using a stippling motion rather than brush strokes and applying the sealant as lightly and gently as possible. Oh yeah and try not to have any water in the brush. After finagling with this lip a little more, I move on to my favorite part, glitter. I mix up some pink glitter with Mod Podge. I brush the glam solution onto the cheeks, forehead, lip, nose, and eyelids. In hindsight, perhaps having much of her face covered in tiny pink specks makes it look like she has acne, but that's okay. Girls get pimples. Besides, these are no ordinary pimples, this is Glam Knee. I paint Gloss Mod Podge on over the black spots I previously drew with the pencils. I then pour on black glitter. Using more Gloss Mod Podge, I seal in the black glitter and gloss the moist tissues of the face. Y'all best not take issue with these moist moist tissues. Oh yeah I almost forgot about filling in the paw pads with blue paint to really sell the weird puppy paw hand thing she has going on. Luckily I had some other things I could attend. Oh god f***ing you! Onto the hair. Um, ears maybe. I have prepared these yarn wefts. I wrap them around Lego Technic axles, gluing them down with hot glue. These axles will allow them to attach and be removed later on. When they have reached the desired size, I flip the hair around to cover the ugly seams. Okay, once again, Maybe heat your glue gun up before you start recording. And also maybe clear the excess hot glue. Um, before I can determine the position of the spaniel tails, I need to attach the head cap to the face. I have the idea to use Lego pieces. I settle on a pair of circular studs for the bottom and one by one circular tiles for the top. I test fit the parts and there is a gap. I have to drill into the little divots to deepen them and now it fits perfectly. Back to the ear pigtail things, I can now drill holes in the head plate with my Dremel at the desired locations. The axles attached to the hair pieces fit through these holes and are held in place by Lego Technic bushings. Now to add Pepper's signature curls. 
I separate the strands of each hair ear into three sections. I twist each section around these foam hair curlers I stole from my mom. I hold each curler in place with two strands of yarn. These are just the extras from when I was making the wefts. To keep everything together and nicely in place, I tie the three curlers together at the top and bottom with yarn. I press the curls into place using my iron, being very careful to avoid melting the glue or plastic Lego pieces. I leave the curlers in overnight for maximum shape. It's time for eyes and it's eye time baby. I start the eyes with these clear, UV resin bases. I brush on gloss Mod Podge and sprinkle on a bit of this coarse, fuchsia glitter. I brush on more Mod Podge and add a fine iridescent glitter. Then I brush an icy blue metallic acrylic paint over that. I paint the irises a dark metallic purple. It requires many layers to cover. I then add an iridescent purple paint. I paint the pupils in a metallic black and pour black glitter over them while the paint is still wet. After that, it's time to fill the dimples with more UV resin. I place these little peppermint candy shaped inclusions in the eyes. Haha <laughs> peppermints. Get it. Finally it is time to string the doll up and assemble her. I start with the longer length of elastic that runs from her neck down to her feet. This takes some practice to get down, but it becomes second nature after soon enough. I then string up her arms. Her hands and feet remain detachable by little hooks, which is important for changing outfits because of their large size. Let's turn our attention back to the hair. I carefully remove the curlers. Then I tie the hair at the base with elastic to make sure the Lego axle and glued roots remain hidden. I then gently tease the three main curls apart into more spiraling ringlets. On to the outfit. In the comic, one of Pepper's outfits includes a McDonald's t-shirt. I felt that was such an iconic look that I wanted to turn it into an entire dress. I made the pattern for the dress myself. I didn't have a wide enough piece of solid red cotton to cut the main section out of, so I split it down the middle and include this plaid print. I think the tablecloth vibe is super fitting for the restaurant theme. I hand stitch on a hook and eye closure for maximum precision. I use Uhu glue to attach yellow fabric around the edges and encase them. This prevents fraying and just looks neater. I paint the iconic M on red fabric and outline it with a black felt tip pen. I cut the logo out and glue it onto a piece of yellow fabric. Then cut it out again and glue it onto the dress. I don't quite think it looks complete, so I whip her up a yellow headband right quick. The intention was for the McDonald's dress to be a funky fashion statement, but it kind of just looks like Pepper is a McDonald's employee. What would you ask Pepper to make you at McDonald's? My friend said she looks like a galactic McDonald's employee, so Big Macs in outer space anyone? Like and subscribe for more colorful custom toy videos if you enjoyed. I don't know what's up, I'm just on a kick of making blue characters lately.